Can Scarlett Johansson ever look bad? No. The answer is always no. Hello Fanatics, I'm Dylan Phillips, and this is the Film Fanatic Review bringing you Ghost in the Shell, starring Scarlett Johansson. First, we'll tell you our initial thoughts and what the movie is about, then we'll move on to our spoiler-free likes and dislikes. We'll finish up with our spoiler-heavy thoughts on this film, and our final word. I'll preface this review by saying that I've never seen the original manga, and that this review is going to be based purely on the self-contained story of the theatrical release. Overall, this movie was quite the disappointment to me. I wasn't the biggest fan of what the trailers had shown us, but after the first couple of minutes in this film, I was thoroughly excited for what world we were about to enter. But then, the story drags on for what seems like more than just the two hour runtime. Ghost in the Shell is about the near future in which Major, a cybernetically enhanced superhuman soldier whose sole purpose is stopping crime, learns that her origin may not be what she was told. For what I liked about this film, I'll start off by saying that my favorite two characters in it were probably Aramaki and Beitu. The film was also filled with a lot of great cinematography and action sequences, particularly the one in the pond. But the best part of this film to me was by far the world that it was set in. This was probably one of the best sci-fi worlds that I've seen in any film to date. I mean, just the minuscule details in it, from the holographic adverts to how telecommunications changed, and then on top of it, all the cybernetic enhancements that's happening. It really did feel like a unique futuristic world. As for what I disliked, I wasn't a huge fan of Scarlett Johansson in this film. I'm usually a big fan of her work, but in this one, I just couldn't get behind it. She didn't really seem to be defining the role as her own, and it felt like anyone else could just jump into the shoes here. And on top of it, it seemed like she wasn't fully committing to the acting that she was doing, particularly in the way that she was walking as this cybernetic human. I found that this film had a very lackluster villain, and subsequently a very dull and lackluster third act final showdown, which to me, in an action film like this, makes it fall flat on its face. The story in this film also seemed a little bit forced at times, and it just felt like they were pushing it forward without giving any emotional depth to the characters or to what was at hand, and so because of that, at the end when they're trying to pay it off, it just didn't work. And throughout the movie, there were just little bits of dialogue that when I heard it, my head just twinged a little bit. I just couldn't get on board with what they were saying. And that's where I'll end our spoiler-free thoughts on this film. If you want to hear our final word or rating of this film, pause now and click the link in the description, because now it's time for spoilers. So first off, I'm going to talk about Scarlett's odd acting in this movie, and what I'm talking about is her walking in it. So throughout the entire movie, we see that occasionally she's walking like a regular human being, but then at other times, she's doing this weird Frankenstein chimpanzee walk where she's kind of like dragging her arms, and I just couldn't get on board with it when she was just changing that so infrequently throughout the movie. Like, so there's this whole subplot in the movie where she takes this serum in the back of her neck, like Matrix style, where when she takes it, it allows her brain to not reject the body that it's in, and that allows her to sustain living in this body. So why didn't it happen where as the body starts to become rejected, she starts to be unable to walk like a human? And then at that point, she realizes she has to take the serum, and it makes her a little bit more dependent on having to go back to the antagonists of the movie to actually survive. I found that would be an interesting subplot to it, but I, again, I haven't seen the manga, so I don't really want to go into the depth of the lore, and because I might be entirely wrong, but I just think as a standalone theatrical movie with this specific type of thing there, it seemed a little bit weird that she was jumping back and forth with this walking thing. There was also one scene that I absolutely hated in this movie, and it was when Major's down in the sewers and she's getting lit up by a bunch of shock batons, because the entire scene is just a dark background with the occasional light rapidly going on the screen from these batons, and it was very seizure-inducing, and it was just very jarring for my eyes. It actually made some people in the audience a bit nauseated. And the final showdown in this movie? Holy crap, was that ever a bore fest. That was the most anticlimactic ending to any action movie I've seen in recent years. Like, absolutely nothing seemed to happen there, and it was just so boring. And, like, you had this whole squad in the movie that could have shown up, but instead, no, it's just this one on one thing, but it's not even with the actual bad guy. It's with this, like, spider crab 
uh, robot thing, I found that the Aramaki assassination attempt a little bit earlier in the movie was more gratifying in the grand scheme of things than that. And even the final scene where Aramaki goes to the actual bad guy of the film and ends up killing him. Those two scenes were much better than the scenes with Scarlett Johansson's character. I was also a bit frustrated in the fact that Scarlett Johansson's character doesn't really get the push forward to try and like look into her origins until about an hour into the film. I'd understand that maybe if this was a three hour film, but it's an hour and 45 minutes maybe. And so more than halfway into the film is when she starts to go against everything that she's known. Typically you want that in the first like 20, maybe 30 minutes. And then after that, it's her exploring that. She didn't really explore that. It was more just her having the glitches. And I felt like it happened a little too late. It just, nothing seemed to happen in the first half of the movie. And I was continually checking my watch, trying to figure out when this movie was gonna end. And then it seems like they try to wrap up everything in the final 20 minutes, just bang, 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 bang. And I felt like there could have been a lot more character development in the middle section of this movie and made it more emotionally gratifying at the end. I also think that the biggest thing that they missed out on in this movie was the squad dynamic. I mean, some of the best scenes in this movie had to do with both her interaction with Beitu and the squad as a whole. The squad is absolute badass and you have tons of actors in there that were fairly good at their roles. I mean, the best action sequence is when you see all these guys fighting when they're going to try and find the hacker, and yet that's the only time you really ever see them go in and do something together. The rest of the time is just basically her and Beitu. And I feel like in a movie like this, if you have the squad behind her, it definitely would make the third act a little bit more intense. Like instead, why don't they go after them at their headquarters and it's their squad going in and trying to take out the lead guy. No, instead she's just, finding out where she's from and has to fight a spider monster and all the other guys might get assassinated but they get saved and it just it didn't seem as good as it could have been and i and i know that they might be setting it up for a sequel but i mean try to make movies that are self-contained stories that are good on their own don't expect that everything's going to become a trilogy aside from the squad scenes in this movie the one that i really enjoyed was when major is in the pond invisible fighting that guy. The cinematography and the visuals there as well as the action and choreography was very good. So with the thoughts heard, here's our final word. Ghost in the Shell is a fascinating sci-fi world with some lackluster characters. While the story has some great concepts and decent action sequences, the plot is choppy as it tries to figure out what it is, much like the Major tries to figure out who she is. The film had so much potential at the beginning, as it was an amazingly visual, futuristic sci-fi world. However, as you watched the movie, the story progressed into what would be the Bourne Identity or Total Recall meets Blade Runner, only a lot less memorable. So I'm going to give Ghost in the Shell a 6. Thanks everybody for watching our review. Are you planning on seeing Ghost in the Shell? Or if you've already seen it, do you have something to add? What did you think of the story of this film? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Dylan Phillips, and this has been The Film Fanatic Review. If you like this video and you want to see more, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Check out our latest Fanatic 5 video where we discuss the top Ryan Reynolds roles. Don't forget to follow us on our social media. We post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Until next time, Fanatics, keep it real.